Praise the Lord. All right, I want to welcome all of those that are joining us now by radio and by live streaming and by television from all around the world. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. Those who are listening by radio, you can get the entirety of this message by going to www.theshepherdshouse.net and uh, listen there, or you can look on YouTube, or you can look up Jimmy Wilson Ministries on Facebook, Glasgow, Kentucky, and uh, you can click on there. Also, uh, watch this in its entirety. If you're watching by radio or television uh, or watching by live streaming, uh, uh, give just a moment to either share this on your Facebook page or call somebody, send them a text message or send them a Facebook message or something. Let them know uh, that what, what channel we're on and what time uh, and uh, invite them to come and be in the service with us here at the Shepherd's House. We're going to be studying in Genesis uh, chapter 26, a very familiar story in the Word of God of a man by the name of Abraham and his son Isaac. And uh, we learn uh, quite a bit about spiritual warfare and how that the enemy is constantly trying to find a device to separate you from the love of God or to keep you from finding salvation and the love of God or to hinder you in your ministry. If you are in ministry, he's bringing up obstacles to slow you down, to hinder you, to discourage you, to cause you pain. Amen. To cause you trouble. Uh, amen. And the enemy is out there to do those things. But the word says that greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Uh, amen. Uh, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I'm not strengthened by a denomination. I'm not strengthened by an organization. I'm strengthened by the Spirit of God, amen, the Holy Ghost. And I'm strengthened by the Word of God that builds my faith, amen. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith, amen. So if we're going to live by faith, that is saying that we have to walk in faith and walk by faith, and the devil wants to hinder your faith, right? Amen. We're going to see here where that the offspring of Abraham was trying to be destroyed and defeated by the enemy. Your enemy today is not the Philistines. And even though it looks like it's a United States government, uh, for the most part it's not. <laughs> it's better than what it was, at least anyhow, for a season of time. Amen. For the church, that is. Uh, but your enemy is not your mother-in-law, or your enemy is not uh, your school teacher or the governor. The enemy is Satan, Lucifer, Slewfoot, the devil. Amen. Uh, so we need to recognize who the enemy is and watch his tactics and be careful for what he's doing because before you know it, just a little bit at a time, and he'll have you in trouble. All right, Genesis 26, verse number 12 says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Let me go back and say this. The, notice it said possession of flocks. Not one flock of sheep or goats, but many flocks. Not one flock of her, herd, excuse me, of cattle. Not one herd of oxen. Not one herd of donkeys, but herds, many of them. And a great store of servants to bring that down into today's uh, uh, being able to relate to this, he would have had 
innumerable employees working for him. It'd be like owning McDonald's or owning Walmart or whatever. That's how much he was blessed. And the Philistines envied him. Amen. Those that refused to work for a living envied him. I'm getting this to where you can relate to this. Amen. Verse number 15. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdman of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdman, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Asik, because they strove for him. Strove with him, excuse me. And they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Setna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with me and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he builded an altar there, and he called upon the name of the Lord. And he pitched his tent, and there Isaac's servants digged a well. And Abimelech went to him from Gerar, and Ahazoth, uh, one of his friends in Pichol, uh, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw clearly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, Let there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee. And let us make a covenant with thee, that thou will do us no hurt. And we have not touched thee, as we have not done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace, thou art now the blessed of the Lord. And he made a feast, made them a feast, and they did eat and drink, and they arose up betimes in the morning, and swear one to another. And Isaac sent them away, and they departed from thence him in peace. He came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged and said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Shabbath. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Mary, the Hittite, and, and, and Basmuth, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, Hittite, which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. 
Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, we come before you once again this day, thanking you for being a, such a good God, thanking you for your blessings, thanking you, Lord, for your joy and your peace, thanking you, Lord, for what you've done in the past, Lord, and for what you're doing right now, asking you, Father, to bless and to anoint us. Lord, use us again. Lord, to uh, bless, uh, uh, Father, other people, Lord, I pray for the anointing of the Holy Holy Ghost to fall upon us, for without your anointing, it will be impossible, Lord, for us to preach your word. I pray, dear God, to touch the hearts of all your children and help us to remember, Lord, each day that all good things come from heaven above. Father, I pray, dear God, to hide us behind the shadow of the cross, that no glory will come to me in the flesh, but, Father, that the name of Jesus might be praised, uplifted, and glorified for now and forevermore. And we give you honor, praise, and glory for being such a good God. And it's in Jesus' loving, precious, and holy name. We do humbly pray and ask all these things. Amen. Looking back into the Word of God here, we see that Abraham had been promised of God that he would be the father of many nations. Amen. And the promises of God shall not be hindered. But after Abraham had died, amen, the Philistines had came in and they had overcame, amen, the whales, amen, that Abraham and his flocks and his children had drawn water from for many years. And back at that time, the water that came uh, from the well was such a, a life-giving uh, force because uh, it took water to be able to live. Uh, you could go 40 days if you have to. You can look at the most of us and tell we've not went that long, amen, without a hamburger, amen, but you could go 40 days uh, without dying, but about three or four days without any type of water, and men and animals alike will die, and therefore you can't have of a herd of goats or a herd of sheep or you can't have a herd of a cattle or anything like that. And man himself, amen, will cease to exist if you don't have water. And if you've got many herds, it's going to take a lot of water. Amen, you can't take a 50-gallon bucket, a 50-gallon tank, amen, and feed the multiple herds, amen, of animals. It's going to take thousands upon thousands of gallons of water water to feed. Uh, it's going to take uh, or water all of those herds. Uh, it's going to take uh, an ongoing springing stream of water to be able to supply the need. Uh, amen. And for the people to flourish. Uh, amen. And be able to live uh, and to exist. Uh, and they knew that. And the Philistines wanted to hit them in the place that it would hurt them. Uh, amen. So that uh, God's people would stop worshiping God. Amen and they would uh, cease to exist because they were a hindrance to them. It's kind of like the liberals against the conservatives today. Amen. If they could get rid of every one of us, uh, amen, they could live like the devil and be happy and have no restraint at all. Amen. And that's what they live for. And that's what they fight for. And that's what they say. We're not going to go away. And we're not going to stop uh, until we can live like the devil. Uh, amen. And do God. Uh, amen. Harm. Uh, and do the church harm. Uh, and feel good about the situation. And I know that'll probably make people mad, but if you're a liberal, this is all it takes to make you mad. Hi. Amen. You done ready, amen, to chop somebody's head off. Uh, amen. If you think that you've got something about God in their mind, you get offended. Just look at the president. He can say good morning and the, and the liberal media I jump all over him. That's where we're at today. But anyway, amen, the, uh, the Philistines uh, wanted to get rid uh, of the children of God. Uh, and they thought if we can stop up them whales, uh, if they're not going to be able to water uh, the animals, uh, if we can stop up them whales, uh, we're not, they're not going to be able to, to eat because they can't eat the cattle. They can't eat the sheep because they won't exist. Uh, and then finally, each and every one of them will wind up dying themselves uh, and they'll be completely gone 
on, uh, amen, and out of our way, and we won't have to bother them anymore. Right now, today, the devil would like uh, to snuff out the church, uh, to shut up every man and woman of God, every singing group, uh, every person that prays, uh, every mom and dad, amen, that teaches your children uh, about Jesus. Uh, he'd love to shut every one of us up, uh, amen, and he'd like to take away, amen, the life-giving flow of the Holy Spirit uh, and to keep you from getting the hold uh, of the power of God, uh, the Word of God, and the Spirit of God, uh, and he'd like to stop up your well, amen, so they stopped up the wells, uh, amen, and finally, amen, Isaac knew that the only way, amen, for us to ever exist uh, is to go back uh, and to unstop uh, the wells, uh, amen, that the devil, amen, has stopped up, or the Philistines, uh, amen, well, Brother Jimmy, you said the devil down it. The Philistines use the devil to do it. Amen. Just like the, the devil uses the liberals, uh, amen, to come against uh, righteousness, uh, amen, and what's right. Uh, I'm talking about the far left. I'm talking about the kooks. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. You see them on television. I don't have to call their names. Uh, amen. But what I'm saying is, uh, amen, that's where the devil, uh, amen, is trying to come against us. Uh, and I just wonder how many people, amen, the devil has stopped your well up. Uh, amen. He brought some circumstances, uh, amen, in your life that you had to work overtime. Uh, amen. And got you plumb out of church. Uh, I wonder how many people uh, has got their wells stopped up. Uh, amen. To where they don't have. Uh, amen. The communion with Jesus uh, that they need to have. Uh, amen. The worship. Uh, amen. In the churches. Uh, amen. That we used to have. Uh, amen. It's pretty much gone. Uh, amen. In the most of them. Uh, amen. We have some praise and worship uh, that we worship to here. And I'll have about three or four out of the entire church uh, that even knows how to worship. Amen. I'm not saying that to put you down. I'm just saying that it's been taken away. I'm just saying your uh, your uh, your well is stopped up. Well, Brother Jimmy, I'm just getting a drink of water. You are. But it's muddy and it's got uh, donkey dung. Uh, amen. There's some dead bugs in it. Amen. What you need uh, is a fresh water. Amen. That comes from heaven because you just got off your face. Uh, amen. From before God. Uh, and you was praying, Lord, uh, clean out my well. Uh, Lord, uh, remove anything uh, that's going to keep me from getting everything that I can get from glory. Lord, I want it all. Uh, I want to be able to receive uh, the blessings of God. Uh, I want to be able to feel your presence. Uh, amen. Some says I like to have more gold. Uh, I like to have more silver. I like to have more of the anointing. I, I want so much of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. That my shoes will squeak uh, and holler, glory, 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 glory. Every step that I take, uh, I want all the God that I can get. Uh, I want enough power. Amen. When the devil attacks me, I can say, <laughs> the devil said, what? I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Uh, amen. The church today is depressed. Uh, amen. The church today is under stress. Uh, and it's not because, uh, amen, of what you're going through. It's because your wells got stopped up. Uh, amen. It don't matter what you go through. Amen. There'll be enough water to drown the devil. Amen. And all his cohorts. Uh, amen. With the glory of God and the love that flows from heaven. Amen. I want to put my mouth under the spout uh, and stay there till I can shout. Uh, amen. I want to be able to walk. Uh, amen. In victory. Uh, amen. Not just come in. Amen. On Sunday morning and let the preacher give me 10 cc's of the word. Amen. To get me going until next Sunday. Uh, amen. I want something. Uh, amen. Today. Amen. That will carry me. If the preacher was to die, I could still shout uh, and dance in the rain. Uh, listen, folks. Uh, we need something. Uh, amen. More than just a little drink of water. Amen. The devil has stopped up wells. Uh, amen. The reason why that a lot of people, amen, are sick today. Amen. They believe in healing. They'll tell you, I know that God heals. Uh, amen. But they don't believe that God's going to heal them. Because their well got partially stopped up. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Amen. When you can feel it, you can believe it. Well, Brother Jimmy, you got to believe it first. Yeah, you got to believe it. But the more you believe, the more that you can feel. And the more you can feel, the greater you'll believe. Amen. And we need the, uh, the wells unstopped. Amen. So we can go, uh, amen, and drop, amen, the bucket down to the bottom. Amen. And hear the water. Amen. When the bucket hits the bottom, you hear it go, and next thing you know, you'll go, then you can say, oh, it's deep. 
it's clear and it's good and I'm going to take my rope and I'm going to pull on that thing I can't wait till he gets up I remember the old well bucket going bing 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 is I to pull that thing up I can hear it beat on both sides amen to the well casing as it was coming out of my granddad's well oh listen when I got it to the top amen he'd be a sloshing everywhere and sometimes he'd run out in my shoes amen I get my feet wet and I'd lay it on top of that bucket and I'd pull that trigger at the top and it release that cold water. I wanted to be the first one to get the dipper in that water because it was fresh and it was good and I enjoyed hearing my bucket go down. Oh, man, it feels good uh, when I can drop my bucket. Uh, amen. In an altar of prayer, whether it be in church uh, or whether it be at home, uh, and the devil comes uh, and he tries to lie. Amen. He'll come and throw rocks into your well. Uh, amen. You can hear them splashing. Uh, amen. On the way down, uh, he'll put sticks and stones. Uh, amen. Like when I was a boy growing up, uh, every now and then you'd see an old hand dug well, and there'd be a farmer out there somewhere have a dead calf, and he rolled it off in that dead well or that old hand dug well. Hey man, bad thing to do. I hope to goodness if anybody's done that, you don't do that because you'll be contaminating somebody's water downstream and it's amazing what we do. Hey man, by ignorance because they just thought I don't use that well anymore and it's out of sight. Boy, won't that preach. Hey man, so I'm going to put some dead works off in there. Amen. I'm going to push that old calf off in there. Amen. Get him out of sight. Amen. And put him in that well. Amen. Wells has been used for a lot of things. Amen. They put dead bodies. And <laughs> they put dead caves down in there. Amen. One time, I, you know what I put in an old well? Hadn't been used. I never did put no animals in one. Knew better than that. Thought too much of my neighbors to do anything like that. But I did tell you what I did do one time. I put one dynamite cap down in it. That thing had been there in an old house I was tearing down. I was getting ready to burn up a bunch of stuff. I said, I don't want to blow my brains up and I, what little I got. Amen. I don't want to hurt anybody else to get hurt. And the only way I know to handle this, I'm going to put it down in the bottom of that old hand dug well. And I'm getting ready to get a dozer in here in a few days. And I'm going to let him push rocks down in there and fill that thing up with dirt and he did and you know what I done we planted corn there the next year and I walked right over where that well used to be and it's covered completely up amen Abraham's wells amen it being covered completely up they put rocks they put earth in there amen until they stopped every one of them up amen trying to get them amen through a season amen to where they wouldn't have anything to drink amen but Isaac knew that the same well that watered my dad's herds will water my herds. I have been blessed. I have been blessed so much by God and the promises of my dad, my father. Amen. He is upon me and I'm going to receive the blessings of God. Amen. And I'm going to redig them wells. I'm going to go and reestablish my faith that I have in God. I'm going to go to the promises of God and where God has moved before, I know he's going to move again and I'm going to go there. I'm going to redig that well because I know there's water there. There used to be water and there'll be water there again. Amen. There's a whole lot of people. Amen. They used to have a shout uh, and now then you're just as satisfied. Amen. To sit like a broom handle in the middle of the service and the preacher about ready to shout. Amen, just about ready to have a running spell. Amen, you're completely satisfied. Amen, to have the broom effect. Amen. My well ain't stopped up, but it's doggone near it. Amen. All I need to do is move over that chest of drawers. Amen. Move over that old bicycle that's on the right hand side. And then three or four uh, cans uh, that, uh, the, that the wife threw in there last week. Amen. When she <clears throat> got mad at me and said she wouldn't speak to me for a while because I didn't let her have what she wanted. I'm going to move that to one side. Amen. And when I'm going to move my bucket to one side of that dead calf, and I'm going to get me some water. What we need to do is clean that well completely out. Amen. Get everything out of it. I remember many years ago at the well where my granddad lived, that thing got to where he didn't have hardly any water at all in that thing because it got partially stopped up. It just kept running sand. Amen. Down through the years, amen, will come in the bottom. See, when you dig a well,
well, your stream of water is going like this. You dig down below the stream of water and the water will go down through there and you've got a pocket uh, of water that stays in there all the time uh, so you can let your buckets and stuff down. See, that pocket got filled up with sand uh, till it got up to about right here and there wasn't no, uh, there was water there but you wouldn't even get a fourth of a bucket. Boy, this a preach. Hey man, my granddad said I got to get that drilling rig to get back out here. He's going to re-drill this thing for me. And if he can't clean the thing out, he's going to go right beside of it uh, and dig another. Now, one way or another, we're going to have us a brand new well and we're going to have us some fresh water. I'm tired of getting a bu half a bucket full or a fourth of a bucket full every time. Oh, I would to goodness. Hey man, that the church would get tired of getting a medicine drop uh, uh, full of the spirit, uh, amen, and stay to an altar, amen, till you get run over, you get saturated, and you get so much of God that you're there every time the church doors is open. And you're volunteering to do things, uh, amen, and you're looking forward to doing things for God, uh, and you're being witnesses, uh, amen. You know where the church is today? It's If you can get them to come, <laughs> they're in behind the four walls, uh, amen, of the church. They're not out knocking on doors, uh, amen. Now, I know that we're in a different time today. I understand that. I had a family member got dog bit the other day, knocking on doors. I realize we're in a different time, and the attitude of the world is, if I want Jesus, I know where to go get him. And if I wanted to go to church, I'd pay six every day. I'd find me one. Leave me alone. I don't want to be bothered. Get off my property and leave me alone. And that's where we're at today. But see, it's those that you work with, uh, amen, that you forgot about. Uh, amen, it's those, uh, amen, that you are uh, akin to, amen, that you forgot about. Uh, we need to be trying to get them to come to church. Uh, they're not going to sick the dogs on you. Amen, they're going to know you. You're going to be connected with them. You're going to have a connection. Uh, amen, listen, if the gas man comes, you're connected through the propane office. It's all right to witness to him. He's not going to shoot you, sick the dogs on you. Amen. Yeah, yeah, you're fixing to give him some money. He's going to be humble. He's going to listen to you. Amen. You need to clean out your well and offer him a cool drink. Boy, well, let's just preach. Amen. Offer him a cool drink. Amen. What you got from your well. Amen. Because your well has been unstopped. Amen. And it's open again. Amen. There's a lot of people today says, well, I just don't know what to say to somebody. Hey, oh, listen, let me tell you something, folks. Amen. When you get a hold of God, amen, and pray like you need to, you'll have more to say than you can get said. Amen, I can vouch for myself. Uh, there's been a few times I come and have some scripture and I'd say, Lord, I don't know what in this world I'm gonna have to say about that. I preached on it before and I have done preached it all that can be preached. Uh, and I'll get in the pulpit and they'll come. The words are fast, I can't hardly get them out like they are today. Amen, they hit on things I ain't never thought of before. Amen, listen, you need to quit worrying. Amen, if you keep your well, uh, amen, unstopped. Uh, amen, and keep it to where the Holy Ghost can flow. Amen, you'll have what you need in the time, uh, amen, that you need it. We've got the promise, uh, amen, in the word of God, uh, amen, that works financially, amen, that works spiritually, that works intellectually, that works in every aspect, uh, amen, things that you've read and studied that you forgot about. The Holy Ghost will bring you back uh, to your remembrance uh, if your well is unstopped. Amen, Isaac, amen, you. So he went and he uh, unstopped the wells. All oh, the spring and water was there. But the herdsmen uh, came and strove for the water. And finally, uh, Isaac moved on, uh, amen, to another well that they went and dug. Uh, they found water there. And here come the liberals, excuse me, here come the Philistines, uh, amen. Uh, and they began to strive again uh, and said, that water is ours. I'm gonna say this, uh, amen, to the people in America today. Amen, the liberals that thinks they're so smart uh, and they know it all uh, and they're right about everything. I want to remind you, uh, amen, this country was not founded upon liberalism. Uh, it was founded upon freedom uh, to worship our God, uh, amen, in spirit and in truth, uh, amen, and to be able, uh, amen, to raise your children uh, in the fear and admonition of God. Uh, amen, that's what America was set forth to do, amen, and the devil has come 
amen, stopped up the wells. Uh, amen, took prayer out of school back in the 60s. Uh, amen, caused a whole lot of problems. Uh, now then, we've got the free run of abortion. Uh, amen, now homosexuality, amen, is running wild. Uh, amen, across the nation today because the devil has stopped up the well. But there's a few that remembers, uh, amen, old time religion. Uh, they remember being born of the spirit and the power of God. They didn't get a paper when they went into the church. Uh, they didn't get a program to follow. Amen. They didn't go by step by step uh, until they got to the place that the church uh, was satisfied. Uh, amen. With them being a member. But they went to an old time altar and they cried out till they heard from heaven uh, and they knew that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost uh, he gave you the stamp of approval because your soul was flooded with joy. Hallelujah. And you know that you passed from death unto life because you went home and hugged the mother-in-law. You went home all right, to work the next day and told the boss that you loved him. Amen. You know you passed from death unto life. Amen. Because the neighbors, amen, whose chicken scratched out your flower bed, you went over and took them a cup of sugar and told them that you loved them and you couldn't keep from doing it. You know that you're a child of the Most High God because your well got unstopped. Amen. The love of Jesus is flowing in your life and you're ready now to share that water with other people. Now I wonder this morning if your water is kind of muddy looking. Any of y'all ever drunk any muddy water? I hate the stinking stuff. I had a spring one time and every time it come a big rain, it'd get muddy. Sometimes it'd be just for a few hours and sometimes it'd last two or three days because the water just kept coming off the hills and going in a cave somewhere. I probably don't know, don't want to know what they was washing in my spring, but nevertheless, uh, it'd, be, uh, it'd look almost like a uh, uh, bad orange juice when you'd uh, go and turn on the faucet. I said, I can't drink. I can't even stand to smell it. I, I'd go down here to the pond and get me some water. They'd be just as good as that right there. It's nasty. I can't handle it. And I finally learned, uh, oh, this will preach. I finally learned, uh, amen, when I knew that there was a storm coming. Hey man, when I knew that we're getting ready to be hit real hard with a flood, when I knew that there's going to be some obstacles, hey amen, about to come up, you know what I do? We go get a bunch of buckets, hey amen, get some big old bowls that was clean, and we'd say, well, before the rain hits here in a few minutes, the clouds are coming up. Let's fill us up some clean water, and we'll have something to drink on two or three days uh, until the spring gets clear again. Uh, amen. And, they, and, and we store it up. Uh, amen. The water, put it in the refrigerator. Amen. And things like that to have drinking water. Amen. But until uh, we got to the place, uh, amen, that we could drink the water out of the tap again. Oh, it was all right to flush a toilet. Amen. It was all right to go water the cows. Amen. But you didn't want to drink it. Amen. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give, uh, amen, well, one of your cats or anything like that, that kind of water, amen. Uh, you want to give them something that you like to drink from. I wonder how many of your neighbors come, would come over and visit, and you say, well, just go to the tap water. We got some water that's mostly water. It's got a whole lot of mud in it, but uh, get the gravel and stuff spit out is pretty good. Or would you go to the, <laughs> would you go to the refrigerator and draw them out a nice, clean uh, cup of water, amen, that was pure and clean, and offer it to them because I've had the muddy water Water, and I don't want nobody to have that. But I've got this water right here, don't you see? <laughs> oh, it tastes so good. Oh, it's so refreshing. It is wonderful. And you can drink it and you can say, man, 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 it sure is good. I remember being really hot and dry a few times in my life, working out on the farm, and we forgot to take a water jug with us. Man, you'd be bone dry. And you think, boy, if I could just get to the refrigerator, I'm going to go over and get me a glass. We got some cold water in the refrigerator. It'll just about crack your teeth. I need to pray for myself because I'm getting ready to drink about half of that. Oh, if I could just get it poured. And you think it ain't going to never get out of that pitcher and get in that glass. And you think it's going to take forever to get that thing up here. But when you get it to your lips uh, and it touches your tongue, you go, oh, oh, oh. Ain't that the way that the Spirit of God is? Oh, when he just touches you, you think, man, uh, I'm good all over everywhere. Amen. Besides everywhere else, uh, man, it feels good. Uh, amen. You just drink and drink and drink. Uh, after a while, uh, amen, you get to feeling like uh, I may make myself sick. Uh, and you go to walking through the house and something goes slush, slush. You ever had any water slush in your belly? 
I have. When I was a kid growing up, he goes, boom, 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 boom. I, I said, Mama, what's wrong with my belly? I'm moving around. She said, well, all that water you drunk, you're full of water, boy. That's what's wrong with your belly. It's going to take a while for it to go down. Amen. When I get to the altar sometimes uh, and I pray, uh, amen, and the well is clean uh, and I get that living water, I'll slush a little bit. Uh, amen. They'll say, man, what has happened to you? I just heard from heaven uh, and it's all right now. Amen, and you'll go into work. Amen, singing, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Woo! Amen, and you'll be laughing. Amen, you'll be crying. And people will say, well, what has happened to you? Are you about half drunk? You say, you're right, but it ain't on Jack Daniels. Amen, it's on the Holy Ghost. Amen, I'm not drunk. Amen, on the, the beggarly things of the world. I didn't go to a doctor and get a pill to make me feel loopy either. Amen. I got something uh, because my well got unstopped. Uh, amen. The devil wants to stop up the well. Uh, amen. And keep you from praying. Uh, he wants to keep you from getting the living water. Amen. That flows from heaven. Uh, amen. It'll be a, like a river, Jesus said. Amen. That shall flow from your belly. Uh, amen. Listen, we need to go uh, after the Spirit of God uh, and keep the Spirit of God. I want you to know today you can't be depressed and full of the Holy Ghost at the same time. They don't go together. It got quiet in here then. You understanding what I'm saying? If you're sitting, I heard different ones say, I just got the mully grubs. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just ain't got no energy. In. I just don't want to talk to nobody. In. I just really don't want to go anywhere. I just want to go in there and cover up my head and go to bed and bury myself in a color cover and stay there for about a week. Yeah, you well stopped up. Oh, Brother Jimmy, you don't know what's happened to me. It don't matter what's happened to you. Your well is stopped up. Amen. It don't, listen, everybody has to go through circumstances. We all have had things, amen, that hits us. And if you hadn't had anything that's hit you, hang on to your hat, Sadie. It's getting ready to get blowed off. Amen. You're fixing to have something. Amen. It's going to hit you. Amen. And when it hits you, you need to make sure your well, amen, is uh, cleaned out. See, if you come across the field and you're starving to death, amen, and you know that there's water in that well, amen. Amen, you're not saying, I'm going to die. You're going to say, 500 more feet, and there's water. 300 more feet, and there's water. Amen, 200 more feet. I can taste it right now. 150 more feet. I believe I can smell it. 100 feet from now, I can taste it, and I'm still 100 feet away. 50 feet, I'm going to go ahead and start crying. <laughs> Because I know it's going to be so good in just 50 more feet. Amen. 10 more feet. Amen. Get out of my way or get run over. Amen. Because I know I'm close to it. And when you get there, amen, you're speechless. Amen. The quietest person you'll ever see is somebody's been real thirsty and they got a glass of good cold well water. Amen. I want you to know, maybe come from an artesian well. Amen. It's really deep. Amen. You need to pray. You need to put your faith and your trust in God. Amen. You need to believe. Amen. That God, amen, is going to come through for you and get your well cleaned out. Get your well emptied. Amen. Get to the place, amen, to work God, amen, can move freely in your life again. Allow Him, amen, to, to, to move the obstacles, amen, out of your life. Listen, folks, I want you to know that water didn't come until they got that well redug. Amen. They had to climb in there and get and remove everything that the enemy, amen, has put. Well, Brother Jimmy, I'm not a well digger. No, but God is. And you can let him clean your well. Amen. He's got the tools and the know-how. Amen. To remove the rocks. Amen. To remove the obstacles. Amen. That's in your way. Amen. When you get thirsty enough, amen, you can go to the well and you can say, oh God, I'll quit my job. I'll sell my car. I'll move to Alaska. I don't care what you want me to do, but I'll do whatever it is that I have to until I get the that well cleaned out. Lord, remove those things that does not need to be in my life. Help me, Lord, today to surrender those things. And the only way to get them cleaned out is when you surrender the rocks to God, he'll pull the rocks out. When you surrender the brush and the dead calf and the tin cans, amen, over to the Lord, he'll get them out for you too. Amen. Sometimes we need to get jealousy. 
and selfishness and pride out of the way. Sometimes, uh, amen, we need to get to the place, uh, amen, that we say, Lord, I surrender all. Uh, if I have to, uh, I'll go on television uh, and confess that I need prayer. If I have to, uh, Lord, I'll get up in front of the people uh, and be anointed and pray for. Let me talk to some of you backwards, backwards. Uh, don't want to be seen type of people. If you're withdrawn, it's because the devil's got you poked down in the well and got brush covered up over top of you. Amen. Listen, when you're full of the Spirit of the Lord, you're hollering, hey, 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 come get it, come get it, come get it quickly, quickly. It's cool, it's fresh. Woo wee. Hey man, but see when you got some obstacles, hey man, you're down and you kind of feel good that brush is in that well. You could slide right over next to that dead calf and put up the smell with him if you can just hide from society. Hey man, you done got used to the death. You done got used to the smell. You done got used to being in the, in the circumstances, hey man, that you've been in. You've been used to living that way and you know it's not right. Hey man, it feels pretty good to hide yourself, hey man, and slip in behind, hey man, other things in the well, hey man, and not ask God, hey man, to remove those things. But see, when you bring all your life and everything you got to God and when you confess everything, you come clean. That well's got dug. Amen. When you confess everything to the Lord and you say, Lord, everybody else knows that what I'm doing is not right. I just need to confess to you that it's not right. I just need to admit that I've got sin in my life. I just need to admit that I've done wrong. Amen. I've got lust. I've got other things in my life that does not need to be there. It's not pleasing to God. And Lord, I pray that the Holy Ghost would move upon me strongly. And Lord, that you clean out the well. Lord, that you would take all of this dysfunction stuff out of me. Lord, I can't concentrate. I can't do things like I need to because of all of this clutter that's got in my well. Oh, listen, folks, the devil will like to fill your mind with worries and problems and troubles and the might be's and could be's and the mishaps. Amen. And how you was done wrong and how you was mistreated and how you're misunderstood. I need to go any further. Amen. That's rocks and dirt that goes down in your well. Amen. You just need to pray. Amen. That God clean that stuff out. Give those things unto God like these people People are at the altar this morning. Uh, amen. I'm glad they come up and prayed. You don't have to wait for me to get on preaching. Uh, amen. Your well needs to be cleaned out. Just come on up here. I can preach to the TV audience while you're getting your well cleaned. Uh, amen. We need to follow. Amen. The Spirit of God. Uh, amen. The Lord today. Amen. Wants to move. And let me tell you something. Uh, amen. When your well's real clean. Uh, amen. You can even pray for other people. Uh, you can even help them. Uh, amen. When they're going through what they're going through. When you get all of your anger and all of your other stuff uh, and all your flesh little flip-flops uh, and all that kind of stuff out of your way. Amen. Where you can praise God. I've seen people come into church. Well, I'm just so tired. I can't hardly praise God anymore. You didn't have no praise with you in the first place. Amen. Because if you had praise in the first place when you come in, the Holy Ghost would regenerate you. Folks, there's been times uh, I thought that I'd have to be drugged from the car, amen, into the church. Uh, and time I got ready to leave, I was a kicking and a jumping and a shouting and praising God. And I felt like I could run to Glasgow. Uh, amen. Don't give me that old stuff. Amen. You got your well full. Uh, you know it's full. Uh, amen. You're just dragging around and then you're helping the farmers drag another old dead calf over into your well. Amen. <laughs> and every time you allow the devil, uh, amen, to do those things, you got another dead calf, uh, amen, you are a dead dog, uh, amen, that you got drug over there, feeling sorry for ourselves. Doom and gloom and agony on me. Oh, if it wasn't for bad luck, I have no luck at all. Oh, <laughs> Well, you poor old thing, get it cleaned out. Get that well cleaned. Give it to Jesus. Allow him, amen, to change your life. Allow him to open up the wells, amen, and put the fresh water. Amen, listen, when trouble comes, you can have the devil standing on both sides of you when the anointing of the Holy Ghost is, and you'll just say, oh, shut up. I'm gonna speak louder than you are. I'm gonna make more noise than what you're making, and I'm gonna carry on, amen, for the sake of the gospel. See, when you 
your well is clean. Amen. You can reach out and help other people. Amen. When somebody comes to you and says, can you help me? Amen. Listen, when you're all full of yourself and beat down and got a dead cast leg hanging over your ear amen, and a dead horse, amen, laying on top of the well, amen, there ain't no wonder why you ain't got anything, amen, you can say to the lost and the backslidden to help them. Listen, folks, amen, when the Lord, amen, cleans your well out, there's going to be a flow of water that comes from heaven, amen, he's going to keep you, amen, submerged, he's going to keep you, amen, to every time there's a problem that comes, amen, he's going to give you sufficient water, amen, to quench your thirst, to get you going, amen, to help you through the situation. See, it's when we get in and out and up and down and we're unstable and we're unloyal and we're uncommitted, amen, that we get our wells, amen, completely full. Listen, folks, if you stop protecting the well, the enemy's going to fill it up. Amen, I want you to know today, amen, there's been a lot of people, amen, didn't protect their well while they can miss for weeks at a time. Amen. They can miss for weeks at a time. Amen. It don't bother them a bit. And when then when they come back to church, amen, their well's full. What we need to do is clean that thing out on a daily basis, keep that thing clean, get to an altar, and I believe if you really get prayed through like you need to, amen, you're going to have a desire to keep that thing clean. Amen, because when it gets clean and the water is pure, you're going to enjoy your salvation. You're going to enjoy what you feel from God. You're going to enjoy, amen, those goosebumps that runs up your shoulders and up the back of your neck. Amen, you feel like your goosebumps has done had grandchildren. Amen, they done multiplied. Amen, because of the love and the joy and the victory that you've got. Uh, amen, you can get up in the morning singing, I got victory over the enemy and this world can do me no harm. Now the devil tried to stop me. He tried to put me down. I just got my well cleaned out. Went down way under the ground and got cleaned out. It got bored out and now I want to shout. I just made that up. I hope the person who wrote that song don't mind. Amen. I just rewrote part of it. I won't even remember after the anointing leaves what I said. But what I'm saying is, uh, amen, we need the victory, amen, in Christ Jesus. Uh, amen, we need to have the power of God. Uh, and the only way to get that power, uh, amen, is to realize uh, and admit to myself, uh, amen, I ain't got what my daddy's got. I need to go back. This is Father's Day. Amen. Isaac, amen, knew that he was blessed. And all the Philistines, amen, really was bothered by him. Amen. But he knew I've got the promises of God, but I'm not receiving. But won't that preach? I've got the promises of God, but I'm not receiving uh, the promises that was gave to my father. But I want you to know, I'm going to go back uh, and I'm going to redig his wells. Uh, I'm going to do the things, uh, amen, that my daddy done. Uh, and if I do what my daddy done, and he was a good Christian, uh, I'll get the same blessings that daddy got. And that's what your children, uh, I hope you're leaving a legacy behind, uh, amen, of your, for your children of what you've done. Well, the legacy you leave behind, will it be, I was in church and somebody hurt my feelings and I was a little, I got out. Or I saw a hypocrite and I just gave up completely on God and went to drinking again. Or somebody made me mad and I slapped the snot out of them and quit. Hey, man, or will your legacy be, I continued on. Didn't wear my feelings on my sleeves. Didn't quit every week. I just continued to go on for God. I just continued to walk in newness of life. I just continued to do the things, amen, that was pleasing unto God. I just continued to live. And now my children has got an example, amen, that they can follow. Now I want you to know, I've not always been perfect, but I've always been in church. And my kids don't even remember me not being in church. My kids has never heard me say, I don't know if I'm going to go today or tonight or not. That was never a question. We never even discussed that. Uh, we, we had a pretty good analogy. Me, me not dead, me be church. They can understand that in any language, amen? It don't matter how much education or no education that you had. Amen, I wasn't out drinking a while and running with the women. Amen, I'm a one-woman man. Amen, I stayed with her 40 years. Amen. Well, Brother Jimmy, you ever seen any prettier women? Oh, I've seen something that's almost as pretty. <laughs> amen, that looks really good. But I, you know what? I kind of like the one that I got. She loves me. Amen. And she don't have any diseases. And she don't, 
boy, I'm plain and straightforward. Amen, she don't have, uh, amen, anything that I'm afraid to get. Amen, I don't have to worry about who she's been with and she ain't gonna run off. Amen. So I think I'm going to keep her a while. Amen. Listen, and they saw, amen, us loving one another and staying in church and living for God. See, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be committed and dedicated, and you have to be willing to keep your well clean and be man enough and woman enough, amen, to go to the well, look at it, and say, you ain't clean. I know you ain't, and I'm going to go to the altar, and I'm going to give every bit of them dead caves, that three dead cats and a dead dog to Jesus. I'm going to let him clean this thing out. Get them rocks and get that dirt out. Hey, Amen. Because I need me a drink from heaven. And I don't just want a drink from heaven for me. But I won't be able to teach him kids and then grandbabies. Hey, Amen. How to pray. Been trying to teach the grandchildren. When I'm with them, I know the, the parents, well, some of the parents teach them to pray. Some of my kids don't teach them to pray. I'll just tell you the truth about it. The Paul teaches them. Take that old head off. And I said, you just hold right here. We're not going to eat a minute. We're going to thank Jesus for this food. And I teach them how to pray. I told one of them the other day, I said, it ain't going to be long. You know how to pray. <laughs> I said, I'm teaching you. Paul's teaching you how to pray. Be thankful for the food. When I'm dead and gone, they're not going to be happy by that $14 I leave them or whatever. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have more than that, but what I'm saying is they're not going to be remember me for that. They're not going to remember or be all that concerned about other things, but they'll remember the church that I pastored. They'll remember my preaching. They'll remember me taking them to the Dairy Queen. They'll remember me taking them horseback riding. They'll remember me praying over my food. They'll remember me crying on the power of God and tell them it's real, it's real, it's real. Children, get you some of this. And then they're going to say, I believe I want some of what Pa got. I want some of that. And I'm going to go to the altar. And Lord, the Philistines has stopped up for the altar, the, the, the well. I, don't, I can't get that water. But I know Pa got it, and I know that I can get it too because I'm going to go to Pa's well. I'm going to pray you there, Lord, till you dig it out. And I'm going to follow that legacy that was left behind. See, anybody can be a daddy as far as being a breeder, plain, ain't I? But it takes somebody special to be a daddy that will hug that kid, play with that kid, sit down with that little girl and put dolly dresses on. I didn't have any girls, but I got granddaughters. I, if you put dresses on dolls, why, of course I have. I put dresses on dolls a lot of times, put their little shoes on and help them fix their hair. Yeah, I ain't too bad at it. <laughs> I didn't play with dolls when I was a boy growing up, but Grandpa gets to play with dolls in my second childhood. I missed it. <laughs> I missed it in my first childhood. My second childhood, I get to play with dolls. <laughs> and I've got an excuse. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, uh, amen, we enjoy doing those things, uh, fishing with the grandchildren, and saying, now, you gotta leave that hook in there, you gotta be patient. One of my grandsons I was fishing with, he cast it in there, he writes, what are you really back out for? He said, well, Pa didn't get anything, well, he ain't had time to see it yet. Hey, amen, you gotta teach them, you gotta have patience. Uh, see that little bobber out there? When that little bobber goes up and down, up and down, that means he's a playing with it. When it goes out of sight and stays there for about 10 seconds, reel that baby in. Amen. Give them an education, uh, amen, on how to fish. Uh, amen. Some, <laughs> you get to do those things. Uh, amen. I'm thankful, amen, that we've got a legacy, and they'll remember every word you've said. They'll remember every act that you've done. Uh, they'll remember every time that you bought them a hamburger, every time that you gave them a milkshake, uh, every time that you gave them a quarter. Amen. They clean my pockets out. A quarter's going to get bubble gum. You know, amen. Sometimes I get dollars. I made a mistake and went down to a mall, to a shopping mall. And I don't know who got the idea of putting all them horses and uh, little spaceships and stuff that you put 50 cents in that runs about a minute and a half. It gets up there and lets them rock up and down. You better have a wallet full of dollars and a boat pocket full of quarters. 
my, uh, three of my grandsons cleaned me out one night. Amen. They had to ride every blessed thing that there was. I said, some of y'all going to have to jump on. Uh, or two of you going to have to get on some of this because Paul's running out of quarters. You better get your thrill and get them in a hurry. Amen. But you get to do those things. Amen. With the children and the grandchildren. That'll be part of the legacy. Amen. That you leave behind. They'll never forget one quarter. Amen. It's the good things, but the devil has stopped up a lot of wells to where mamas and daddies. Boy, I know I preached a long time. Mamas and daddies don't spend the time. Amen. That you need to with the children. Amen. And, and they don't get the love. Amen. And they don't see mom and dad kiss each other. And they don't see expressions of love. Love. Well, Brother Jimmy, all that romance went out when I had my last baby. That's the reason you had your last baby. <laughs> I thought I'd get a little education. We've probably done run out of time now. Maybe it's off there. <laughs> Hey, Amen. I need to teach some of y'all after church. Meet me in a fellowship hall in the back, and I'll sit down with you a couple at a time and help you understand some things. <laughs> need to keep that romance and that love in there. Don't let your well get stopped up. Woo! Praise the Lord. Won't we stand together? If you've got a need while they get us a song, won't say goodbye to the live streaming audience. God bless you. We'll be back tonight. It's 645. Amen. Be sure to tune us in again. They're going to cut off the live streaming and they're going to play us a song of invitation. If you've got a need of any kind,